The modern day fairy tale, The Wizard of Oz, is a story that has appealed to people of all ages for the past many years, especially to those of us who came to know it through the 1939 movie starring Judy Garland. Early on in the story, Dorothy Gale runs away from home with her dog Toto in an effort to find a place that's safe from the clutches of Miss Gulch. And later on in the story, she encounters some other characters who are also on a quest. She runs into a lion who sees himself as a coward and longs for courage. She meets a scarecrow who feels that if he had a brain, he could be smart like everyone else. And she comes upon a tin man who believes if he had a heart, he would be able to experience love and sentimentality. But by the story's end, each of the characters discover that what they have longed for most is what they already had. They come to realize that they, in fact, had enough of the very things they thought they had lacked. Dorothy's place of security wasn't somewhere over the rainbow, after all, but was instead at home with the, love, with the ones who loved her. And the lion, scarecrow, and tin man each had shown through their own adventures that they already possessed the character traits which they had always longed for throughout their lives. The disciples in this morning's brief passage also longed for something they felt was lacking in their lives, faith. And it's no wonder that they should ask Jesus for a larger dose of faith. When a paralytic's friends lower him through a roof to be healed by Jesus, Jesus heals the man because of the faith shown by his friends. When a Roman centurion approaches Jesus to heal his lover, Jesus performs the miracle and proclaims the centurion's faith greater than that of anyone he has met so far. He cures a woman of her hemorrhages and he declares another woman who anoints his feet forgiven of her sins, both because of the faith they had exhibited. And later on in Luke's gospel, a blind man is given sight and a leper is healed. And in both cases, Jesus says the miracles were results of the faith of the ones who sought healing. Clearly, if the disciples wish to perform miracles, they will need more faith, at least more than that which they already possess. And so they ask Jesus for that larger dose of faith. Jesus, increase our faith. The disciples wanted more faith because they assumed they didn't have enough to perform the miracles that Jesus was performing. And their cry for more is just an echo of our own present day cry for more of that which we feel we are lacking. If it's not faith, then it's something else. We're not good enough, perfect enough, thin enough, powerful enough, successful enough, smart enough, patient enough, safe enough, extraordinary enough. But it's a lie. Lynn Twist in her book, The Soul of Money, refers to scarcity as the great lie. She writes, for me, and for many of us, our first waking thought of the day is, I didn't get enough sleep. The next one is, I don't have enough time. Whether true or not, that thought of not enough occurs to us automatically before we even think to question or examine it. We spend most of the hours and the days of our lives hearing, explaining, complaining, or worrying about what we don't have enough of. Before we even sit up in bed, before our feet touch the floor, we're already inadequate, already behind, already losing, already lacking something. 
And by the time we go to bed at night, our minds are racing with a litany of what we didn't get or didn't get done that day. We go to sleep burdened by those thoughts and wake up to that reverie of lack, this internal condition of scarcity this mindset of scarcity lives at the very heart of our jealousies, our greed, our prejudice, and our arguments with life. In her book, Daring Greatly, Brene Brown writes, scarcity is the never enough problem. We spend inordinate amounts of time calculating how much we have, want, and don't have, and how much everyone else has, needs, and wants. What makes this constant assessing and comparing so self-defeating is that we are often comparing our lives, our marriages, our families, and our communities to unattainable, media-driven visions of perfection, or we're holding up our reality against our own fictional account of how great someone else has it. Jesus increase our faith so we can perform miracles. Jesus make me a more charismatic preacher so more people will be drawn to our worship services. Jesus make me more attractive so I won't live out my life in loneliness. Jesus, heal me of my homosexuality so I can fit in and live happily ever after. Jesus, give me more of what I lack. And his response to the disciples' requests, as well as those of our own, is the same as the response that Dorothy and her cohorts received in The Wizard of Oz. You've already got it. You've already got enough of what you're asking for. You've got enough faith and don't even realize it. He tells them all you need is the faith of a mustard seed to uproot trees and plant them in the sea. He's not saying this to them to point out that they are so deficient in the faith department that they must not even have the faith the size of a mustard seed. He's trying to tell them that they don't need an overflowing abundance. They only need a little bit. And they already have that much. They have enough. And so do we. You see, the opposite of scarcity is an overflowing abundance. The opposite of scarcity is enough. And we have enough. Most of us just don't realize it. We have enough and we are enough. When we come to realize this and we, when we live this out, Brene Brown calls it wholehearted living. She writes, wholehearted living means cultivating the courage compassion and connection to wake up in the morning and think no matter what gets done and how much is left undone I am enough it's going to bed at night thinking yes I am imperfect and vulnerable and sometimes afraid but that doesn't change the truth that I am also brave and worthy of love and belonging So what do you feel is lacking in your life? What is keeping you from experiencing a full life of joy and happiness? Jesus tells us to stop looking at life through the lens of scarcity that so many of us have grown up with. Stop listening to the lies of advertising media that tries to convince us that their product will fill the holes in our lives. Stop believing that you need to be anyone other than who you are and start living authentically. You are unique and you are loved because of your uniqueness. 
having more faith so you can perform great deeds won't make God love you any more than God already loves you. And we don't need to be anything other than who we are. We don't need to compare ourselves against anyone else. We are enough. And when we finally come to realize that simple truth, then we will be able to move from a mentality of scarcity to one of gratitude. We will be able to lift our hearts in praise and thanksgiving for what God has given us instead of asking for more. And when we move into a world of gratitude, then we are finally able to experience the realm of God which Jesus spent his ministry preaching about. We are enough. God is enough. And we have enough. May each of us experience these truths in our lives today and every day. Amen.